You're tuning in to Enjoying God with S.J. Hill, a series of podcast and vlog interviews diving deeper into themes and experiences of a beautiful God and His beautiful gospel from S.J.'s life and over 50 years of ministry. Please share and subscribe and send any questions or comments to stephenhill6 at gmail.com. We may even include your questions in a future episode. We're praying that you'll be blessed by these recordings to truly know what it means to glorify God by enjoying Him forever. All right, well, welcome everybody back to uh, Enjoying God with S.J. Hill, our podcast and vlog uh, episode number 10. Wow. Wow. I, I went and checked. I was like, how many have we done? This is our 10th one. And uh, so thanks for being here, SJ. Good to oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Good to have you back. I'm excited to do another one. Um, today, we wanted to talk about, you know, we've been kind of w- walking through basically the person and work of Christ over several episodes. And uh, I, we, we kind of felt like today we would be at a good place to talk about being co-raised with Christ, what it means to be you know, we, we'd been talking about how we died with Christ. Um, the old has been removed. Um, but the, the, then the glory is that the new has come, you know, and Paul says, behold, the new creation. And so uh, we, were, we were just thinking to talk a little bit about that, what it means that we were, we not only died with him, but we were raised with him. We resurrected new creation. In fact, we were even raised and seated with him in, in heavenly places. And, uh, So yeah, it's a vast subject, so beautiful. I hope you guys will all stay with us through this episode as we just kind of meditate on what is really one of the the most glorious realities of all time. I mean, uh, the person and work of Christ and the fact that we were included in him to be actually, you know, mystically and somehow uh, resurrected and made new. Um, so I just love to hear some of your thoughts to start out, SJ, and then maybe we converse around those. But uh, what a sure. glorious! Song. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's an amazing mystery, but it's just uh, an incredible thing to to meditate on as best we can. You know, Come uh, on. what I thought I'd do is uh, begin by reading out of the Mirror Bible. I love the Mirror Bible. Oh, uh, uh, me too. Yes. Come on. <laughs> and. Uh, In Romans chapter 6 and verse 4, Paul says, Baptism pictures how we were co-buried together with Christ in his death. Then it powerfully illustrates how, in God's mind, we were co-raised with Christ into a new lifestyle. I love that. (laughs) We were co-raised with Christ into a new lifestyle. And that certainly is what Paul's theme is. Throughout Romans chapter 6, he talks about the power of sin being broken off of us, our old selves having died with Christ. We touched on that previously, but now to think that having been raised up with Jesus, we can experience newness of life. And and what, what does that even speak of? You know, you and I were talking a little bit before about uh the righteousness of Christ being counted as ours, you know, to think that this newness of life ushers us in to the righteousness of God in Christ and that we have the same standing before the father that Jesus has. That's massive. (laughs) It is. It's absolutely massive. But I think so often uh, we, we get so into uh, sin consciousness and and the darkness that you know seemingly surrounds us that that we lose sight of the light of the righteousness of Christ and what that actually has ushered us into. You have any thoughts? Oh, it's so good, man. I I, I love meditating on the enormity of this because, like yeah. you said, I think. Um, Part of the reason sometimes we don't see things happening in our practical life or victory or, you know, uh, whatever, just fruitfulness is because we focused on sin. We focused on darkness. We've we've made the temporal circumstances so large and 
it, it, rather than the resurrection of Christ being the the like thing that captures our gaze, you know, exactly. captures, and it, it's uh, and I love it in the Mirror Bible how it it, it says uh, we're raised into a new lifestyle. Is that the phrase? It's like it, you know that it that's very practical language. Yeah, new lifestyle. You know? It's it's not just uh, you know, the new creation is kind of a flowery poem like oh yes we're all new you know but this has massive implications on how it affects us um and i think a lot of that is uh by the spiritual life that it really gives to us that he's really given to us you know that we actually have spiritual life uh, you, you know coursing through our being now the yeah, life exactly. of life. and uh but i think you know like like paul said in colossians 3 he encouraged us to set our minds on those things you know, these very realities, like setting your minds on things above where you are hidden with Christ and God, where you're seated with him. And as we, and, that, and that's part of why we're doing this podcast today. It's like, as we set our mind on these realities, it has so many practical implications of that spiritual life manifesting uh, in our daily experience. Yeah, exactly. You know, you and I hadn't talked about the scriptures that I was going to be referring to, but Colossians 3, 1 and 2 yeah, those verses, and I'm going to go over since go. you mentioned it and uh, read these again out of the Mirror Bible. Man, I love this. <laughs> Talk about getting stoked. See yourselves co-raised with Christ. Now ponder with persuasion the consequence of your co-inclusion in Him. Now listen to this. Relocate yourselves mentally. I love that. I love Engage that. Engage your thoughts with throne room realities where you are co-seated with Christ in the executive authority of God's right hand. Wow. Becoming affectionately acquainted with throne room thoughts will keep you from being distracted again by the earthly realm. So what are we talking about? We're talking about relocating ourselves mentally, seeing things from God's perspective, embracing who he's made us out to be, what he thinks of us, who he, he, uh, he's, what he speaks of us, who he sees us as. And then he goes on to say again, becoming affectionately acquainted with throne room thoughts. That's exactly yeah. what we're talking about. So throne good. Room thoughts, throne room reality. So it's, it's getting a kingdom perspective, seeing things from God's perspective. So to say that we're righteous in Christ, we have the same standing with the Father that Jesus has, is to say that in his sight, we are blameless. We're still growing and maturing, but in his eyes, we're sanctified, we're set apart for this kind of lifestyle, we're blameless. And this is the kind of throne room thinking that we've got to embrace. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and again, it's like, the, it's like everything in life is kind of, you know, it, the, the battle is for your attention. Right. You know, what are you giving attention to? And um, I think even sometimes we'll, we think of these realities of like being co-raised and co-seated um, and, and having, you know, like you said, the, the same standing that Jesus has, we, we almost, we, we put it off into some far away spiritual realm or, right. or maybe far off into the future. Um, and, and we still, it's like, we've been so used to focusing on fallenness, brokenness, uh, sin. And, and, and so our, when our attention is there, we feel bound to these things. And that, but we actually, and what, what God sees when we begin to see through God's eyes is what is actually real. That, that's another thing yeah. that I think often get confused. And we're like, in God's eyes, we're, we're resurrected and we're seated in Christ. But who do we think sees the most clearly? God exactly. or us? You know, who, who's seen right. me? God or us? Oh, wait, God never <laughs> loses sight through, you know? Like, he's not the one that needed to repent. We, we are, you know, we were. Right. And, and so... Our repentance is just beginning to line up with what he actually knows to be true, which is that we do have the life of Christ, you know, uh, flowing through us right now, 
which dwarfs every challenge and yeah. every, and I think that's, you know, when we were, we were talking before this about, you know, if we want to get into, you know, even how we deal with darkness or how we deal with demonic stuff, that, that stuff all gets dwarfed when we realize you're, you're seated on the throne with Jesus, like, right. <laughs> you know, exactly. which is the bigger thing, which is more powerful. And, uh, when we when we set our attention and we relocate ourselves mentally, all of a sudden we we begin to experience that his power, his resurrection power, his resurrection life. Yeah. Flowing through it's in reality, not not you know, somewhere off in the spirit realm, you know, which we say, yeah. well, we're yeah, we're holy in the spirit. But no, this is real. Like the spiritual realm is real. It's it's yeah. now, you know. So I you get me going on it. But. <laughs> you, know, you know what God sees like you said, is, is reality. And, and I, I really want to, to encourage the listener to, to understand that this is true reality. And, you know, we're so used to going by feelings and circumstances and right. what we see and what's going on around us that we really do need to change our way of thinking. Uh, we need to repent. Yes. Repentance. Hover- yeah, <laughs> repentance is not repentance. Yes. You know, it's like, uh, it's not penance on steroids. It's a change of thinking, which changes our hearts. Yes. Get turned in a totally diff- different direction. And uh, we start seeing things as God sees them. But yet I can't say enough, man, this is the reality. This other stuff. Yeah. That tries to draw us away and get us to live in fear and condemnation, that tries to move on our feelings, work through our minds. It's not reality, man. It, it, it's a smoke screen, but for so long over the years, we've bought into this stuff. Yes. And yet, and yet I know it sounds outlandish and far-fetched. Oh, you just got your head in the sands. No, we're just in heavenly places. Right. With Christ. And the more we let Holy Spirit change our way of thinking, this is going to start becoming a reality in our lives and it will affect uh, our health. It will affect uh, our security. It will affect uh, for our protection. I mean, you know, it. Th- this will be all inclusive. Yes. What Jesus did for us. Yeah. You know, and uh, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, the old warning that people will give you like don't be so heavenly minded that you're not earthly yeah, exactly yeah you know but the reality is uh you know in colossians 3 paul actually says set your mind on things above not on the things of earth that's like exactly. at least that's my esv version you know uh francois is a beautiful way of saying they all the translations will c- come back to saying like you, you're not just it, it's not just encouraged i mean this is really like paul is emphatic like yeah your thoughts on what god knows to be true it that's not an irrelevant pie in the sky no it it's, isn't it's where you find the transforming power it's where we where we begin to experience we don't we don't have an ability to self-generate transformation the transformation hap- happened and and manifest in christ exactly and so it is really just you know knowing oh knowing ourselves what is it like to have our life hidden with christ in god you know like to yeah, know the here and now you know what i'm saying in the present yes. this is just about going to heaven this is about newness of life a new walk of life in the here and now i mean yes why, why are we just focused on checking out i i uh i, I look forward to the next age but there's something in me that is thinking Almost continually, there, there is a life hidden with Christ in God that is at my disposal. What, what does that yep. taste like? What's that look like? What does that feel like? You know, and, and uh, so I'm always putting out feelers, you know, Holy Spirit help oh, me. But come on. because, because, uh, yeah. Eternal life is life with God. And uh, again, I don't want to be misunderstood. I, I'm looking forward to face-to-face encounters with uh, Father Jesus, Holy Spirit. Don't get me wrong, but yes, man, I want to live life to the fullest now. And, and my stinking thinking over the years 
has just really been a pain in the behind. You know what I'm saying? It's just uh, no, exactly. It's time we break out of this and and think uh, throne throne room thoughts. That, that's a tongue twister. Throne room <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> Times, yeah. <laughs> no, I think, I think that's the thing too. And and you know, I I have compassion for you know because I I've experienced it too. Like what we what we've experienced is just usually that's all we know. Yeah. You know, um, that's all. But that's why the gospel comes to us to show us there's actually there's a lot of greater realities than just what we've experienced. There's there's so much in Christ that that's going to blow our minds for all eternity. Yeah. And and even when it says that it's hidden with Christ in God, it's not that's not hidden from us. It's really just right. hidden from the it's kind of I think part of that is speaking of protection. But also it's it's hidden from the view of of the the earthly minded, the worldly mindset right. doesn't see exactly. that. Exactly. Yep. And that's usually all we've known. You know, we grew up in some sort of worldly mindset. Even most religious stuff is kind of a religious worldly thing. And Jesus comes in and, and invites us and, and and opens our eyes to something so much greater about God and something so much greater about us. And namely that we're in union now and we have that life now. Yeah. Um, but until, you know, until we hear that, you know, we, you want to keep hearing it and keep kind of just setting our attention. Uh, that the, Only then does it begin to kind of feel real by experience, you know. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I'm glad you brought that that point out that it's not hidden from us. Right. It's hidden for us in a way. It's yeah, hidden you know? for us. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. this is the gospel. Man, I just want to go ballistic sometimes, even as I'm getting older. It's like, man, this is the gospel. Why isn't this yeah. being preached? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Oh, man. Well, a lot of times we're afraid of disappointing people, too. So we kind of set their expectations really low. Yeah. And we're like, well, you know, life is just going to be hard and a struggle. You're never really going to overcome. But someday you'll die and go to heaven. Hey, yeah. you know. Yeah. And. Uh, I mean, it, the, the message of the gospel is very rarely, I'm not saying there's nothing in there about, you know, uh, like, like you said, the age to come, the return of Christ. Although, you know, even going to heaven is kind of, it, it was more about heaven here, you know, yeah, Jesus exactly. is bringing heaven here. Right. But it, a lot of the message of the gospel isn't about the future and the age to come and stuff. It's, it's something actually happened at the life, death and resurrection. Some already happened. Yeah, for sure. That's the message of of the mess of of the gospel. It's like what what already took place in Christ. And Paul wouldn't encourage us to set our minds on something if it if it wasn't already true and real now, you know. Exactly. So it's it's yeah, like I, I don't think we can talk about this enough, you know, how uh, Ephesians 2 6, you know, we're <laughs> seated with Christ in heavenly places. Like, I don't think you can talk about that enough. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where I wanted to go next. Uh, because, Here we go. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, we were talking before uh, this podcast about just touching on some of these truths and then maybe come coming back and unpacking them more at a right. later date. But, you know, we're not only resurrected with Christ, but we have ascended with Christ. And, and uh, you know, what does that look like? Like you said in Ephesians chapter 2, we... We have been raised up and seated with Christ in heavenly places. Ooh. And then it says, far above all principality and power. Yes. And every name that is named. That, that, that's just, yeah, profound. In fact, uh, you know, I could, I could read that out of uh, the mirror. We do the mirror again. Bible. Yeah, why not, man? I love it. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2, yeah, verse 5. This is how grace rescued us. Sin left us dead towards God like spiritual corpses. Yet in that state of deadness and indifference, God co-quickened us together with Christ. Sin proved how dead we were. Grace reveals how alive we now are. Before anyone but God believed it, he made us alive together with him and raised us up together with him. And then he goes down in verse 6 and says, and this is in parentheses, as much as we were co-included in his death, we were co-included in his resurrection. We are also elevated in his ascension 
Now, now listen, listen to this. Yeah, I, I know we believe this, but I just like the way it's worded. We are also elevated in his ascension to be equally present in the throne room of the heavenly realm where we are co-seated with him in his executive authority. Wow. We are fully represented in Christ Jesus. <laughs> man, if you can't get stoked over that, man, you may yeah. need to be resurrected. <laughs> it's like, he said, I know we believe this, but I'm like, but do we though? <laughs> you know, <laughs> how, what percent of that do we actually believe? I don't know, man, you know, <laughs> but it's good to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, it seated in his executive authority and, you know, like you said, I, this really does remove all fear. You know, uh, I think there's there's just so much, and, and I get it. You know, we've been beat up. We've experienced a lot of negative things in life, and and we're afraid that this stuff is going to happen again. But it's like, I mean, this absolutely destroys any victim mentality. You know, this destroys any, uh, like, poor old me thing. And especially when you really start to connect with it, when you start to, you know, encounter this in your personal experience, like there's the executive power, the authority of Christ, like his, it's, it's so massive and mind blowing. It leaves no room for us to be stuck anymore or to be bound. I know, I know we were talking about this before. There's so many Christians that are still afraid of all these demons and strongholds and afraid of darkness. And man, if we're, if we're in him at the right hand of the father, what, what do we have to fear? Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, we're there as sons and daughters, but we're also there as the bride of Christ. So, you know, um, we're surrounded by this affectionate God and and caught up in all of this. And again, we are to see things from Trinity's perspective. A, a, not not to getting sidetracked by all of the, the gloom and the doom. I'm not talking about sticking our heads in the sand and right. denying the darkness that's out there, but yes. understanding that light dispels darkness. And we are to pray. We are to declare authoritatively what has been promised to us as seated next to the Father in Christ. Um, Yes. There may be some who, who disagree with me on this, but listen, I've been on the planet 74 and a half years. I, I've wrestled with some of this stuff, but at the end of the day, you know, there's there's been some extremes with within like word of faith movements on confession to some degree. But I'm just gonna tell you something. I, I think I think we need to be more aggressive in our declarations of what has been given to us in Christ. Come so, on. So daily, and, and and listen, it's not a ritual. Right. Just, I, I'm choosing to live in the reality that no weapon formed against me and my family will be successful. Yes, yes. I declare that. I'll wake up, you know, at three in the morning and have to go to the bathroom, and I get back in bed, and I can't go to sleep right away. So I just start praise, you know, praying. I, 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 uh, I, I start talking to Father. I... Uh, I, I just uh, love on him and let him love on me. But then I also start speaking these new covenant realities, you know, yes. these thoughts from the throne room. And I start praying for each each grandchild of mine and, and, and Pam's. And uh, I, I, I speak health over them, uh, protection on the highways. I mean, you know, things that every one of us can, can uh, think about. Yes. Be because again, why, why shouldn't we do this? You know, I, I, I'm kind of at a loss for words here. I want to be gracious, but it's like, let's just don't let things happen. You know, I mean, there's, yeah. there's evil yeah. everywhere and all kinds of intentions, whether we're talking about demonic or human. Um, and I know there's a thing called persecution, but I think, I think there's more suffering that goes on than is necessary. And absolutely. 
And, and, and if I'm believing for too much, then let Jesus tell me that when I check out and see him, you know, it's just, <laughs> you know, yeah, I, the, you know the, I, I, yeah, go ahead. Well, the, the epistles, you know, they, they all encourage us to, to keep praying, pray for all the saints, pray continually. And uh, yeah. I think, you know, sometimes people can get into a place of stress and, and, and unrest when they think that it all depends on us to do that. But it's it's from a place. And this is why, you know, that you'll hear some there has been some good teaching about we're praying from heavenly yeah, places. Exactly. There. We're not trying to get anyone into this. We're praying because we're in this because we're in this. We're doing this. Yes. exactly. Yeah. And from our seats in heavenly places, we speak as we're inspired by the Holy Spirit, not not because we're looking around and afraid or we're we're concerned by all this lack, but because we're we are in Christ, speaking his blessing, speaking his words, who, who's continually always releasing blessing and protection and healing and life. Yeah. And so, and that's the same authority that we've been given. So it's, it's beautiful. We don't need to do it from a place of fear and, and lack, which I think is where a lot of some of this weird warfare stuff comes in where it's like, yeah. we've almost taken the pressure back on ourselves to save the right. world because we're so afraid. And so, yeah, and dude, if you've ever, and you, I know, you know, like anybody who's listening has ever run in those heavy warfare streams. It's just a lot of work. And usually people are getting beat up all the time because they're taking on things that wasn't their responsibility to try to fix, or they're trying to do something that Jesus already did. Yeah. In some way, right. you know? And, uh, but on the other side of it, it's like, there is a place of, of restful decrees and declaring from, from this co resurrected place from this co seated authority. Exactly. And yeah. it's it, and, and, and restful <laughs> prayer. Right. Yes. Yes. It's just called prayer. It's, a, it's OK to still pray. You know, <laughs> rest doesn't mean you, you uh, uh, just sit around and don't do squat, you know, don't right. do anything. Exactly. But, but we're not striving to get into the to the holy of holies or the heavenlies. Uh, again, that's yes. what we need to be careful is to even the songs we sing. You know, the songs may have great melodies, but right. theology is so true. Out, you know? So I, I don't strive, but in resting from a place of authority, I, I've also come to realize that we're partnering with God on the earth. God gives us the privilege of partnering with him. You know what I'm saying? Yes. In fact, Paul says that we're ambassadors. Come on. Of Christ. I mean, do we know what a, an ambassador is? It's amazing. The United States of America sends ambassadors all over the world. They represent the United States. Exactly. And when they speak, it's as if the United States government is speaking. That's how yeah. powerful this thing is. And so in 2 Corinthians 5, when Paul talks about the ministry of reconciliation, man, we've been called to take the kingdom with us wherever we go, be Jesus, arms, hands, feet, mouthpiece. Come on. To declare, to, to release people into freedom, to, uh, to love on them, to embrace them in the love of God. You know, th this is our duty. But, but again, to, to realize that we're speaking as ambassadors, representatives of Jesus Christ. I remember years ago, uh, hearing some teaching on, you know, the power in the name of Jesus. And, and man, I mean, my heart just kind of leaped when I started hearing some of this stuff that That's it, good. you can't separate Jesus from his name. So when you declare things in the name of Jesus, or you're believing for things in the name of Jesus, it's just as if Jesus is there, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, again, a, a throne room reality. You know, that, that one hit me some years ago when I was looking at that passage where Jesus says, uh, if you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. Yeah. You know, like giving, giving, which, you know, I think in the, in the Hebrew context, that was very massive. They didn't take that lightly that, wait, this guy just says that you have authority to forgive sin. They're like, only God has that authority, you know? And, and, uh, Jesus is like, you know, any, to anybody's sins, you say they're forgiven, they're forgiven. And I just started thinking about that. I'm like, and he has entrusted us with so much authority yes. on earth. And, and isn't, and I, I, love, I still love that picture because isn't that really what, you know, what we're, how we're supposed to use that authority is like, 
not to lord it over anybody or to think puff ourselves up, but to speak forgiveness, you know, to declare the the mercy and grace from this place of authority. It's like we're we're coming as ambassadors, saying you're embraced, you're loved, you're forgiven, and yes, I break this darkness power and and yeah. this stuff has any authority over you because you're so loved and because you're he's meeting you right where you're at. Like the beauty of what we get to do with our authority, you know, in that grace. But just just to realize, you know, some of the statements that he's made that are so massive, like you know, you have the power on earth to forgive <laughs> sin. You know, that's <laughs> woo. That's crazy. I know, I know. We've quoted 2 Corinthians 5, 18 several times, but this is the, the ministry of reconciliation to tell people that in the mind of God, you, you've been forgiven. You've, you've been reconciled. So good. This is a father who wants to embrace you. You know, let go of these mindsets of yours. Open up your heart to yeah. God in Christ. Come on. And let us help you, you know, in your journey out of bondage to freedom. Oh, man, I'll, I'll tell you what. We, so, we, we have so focused on the wrong stuff. Um, but I've been there and done it, you know. Yeah, you know, it, it, and that's why I love just keep coming back to the person and work of Christ, what he's done, where he's placed us so that we're 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 starting from this place of of completeness. We're starting from this place of of union, of intimacy, right. of yep. already, already there. We're not trying to get there. Yep. And then we, when we, when we see him, and when we see what he's done, we can begin to live out of that. And there's an endless spiritual supply of, of, of bliss, of Absolutely. love, of power of, you know, the, the endless supply of God's life, you know, uh, to, for, to start from that place is so yep. liberating. Yeah, you can't from, start any place else. Yeah, exactly. there's no, we have no other solid ground, no other footing. Yeah, and I want to say lovingly that I think we're praying for far too many things that we already have been given in Christ. True. Yes. And, uh, and uh, you know, pleading, begging, uh, not sure about the will of God. When if you just look at what Jesus provided for us through the cross, and you know, and Paul and John and Peter echo these things, you know, Paul says, God shall supply all, all our needs Come in glory on. through Christ Jesus, Woo! you know, that, that transcends the economy, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not going to give in to a fear of what could happen because of the economy, because regardless yep. of the circumstances, God's promise is true. I, I I have to believe that, or otherwise, you know, what's the point of all of this? You know what I'm saying? And Come on. and uh, and I, I'm not just believing for an occasional healing, but I'm 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 believing and and speaking health into my children's bodies, my grandchildren's bodies, my body, my wife's body, my friends. Uh, yeah. You know, I pray for for my friends' businesses, my son's business. Um. There, there are just things that, that have already been given to us, and that's where you need to, to learn what's been promised in the scriptures Yes. so that when, when things arise, this stuff will automatically come out of you, you know? Um, yeah, it produces faith and removes fear. Yeah. It just, yeah. This gospel, you don't, and, and then you don't find yourself trying to strive up faith and trying to rebuke fear. But this, his, his perfect love, which is expressed in the life, death, and resurrection yes. of Christ, is what casts that fear out and, right. and supplies the faith. And uh, so it's so beautiful. Just keep looking at, at him, you know, I, that's, and that's my goal. Just like to keep looking, behold him, you know, and behold that I'm in him and he's in me. And uh, uh, it's just, yeah, endless, man, endless. So as we wrap this thing up, I just want to highlight again. We're not encouraging people to stick their heads in the sand. Yes. Uh, you okay. know, ignoring circumstances does not mean denying <laughs> what we can see with our eyes. That's but right. It's transcending that and saying, okay, yeah, that's what the economy says. But this is what throne room reality says. Yes. And then we agree with God. The word confess 
means to say the same thing. It means basically to say what God says. That's it. What does God say about our circumstance, our present situation? And then the more we just get uh, uh, lost in God's agenda, the more the more we walk with him, you know, we're going to sense what's on his heart about a given situation or something that's happened in the day or something that he wants us to pray for. And then we can respond accordingly. But, but uh, instead of trying to break through into some heavenly realm, yeah, prayer and fasting, no, we're, we're seated far above all principality and power, far, far above evil empires, <laughs> yeah. far above all the schemes of the World Economic Forum and New World Order and the globalists. We're far above all of that. Yes. And Father Jesus, Holy Spirit will have the last word. And that's the thing that we need to keep our focus on. Come on. Well, I think that's a great place to end. We, we may explore this more in further podcasts, but uh, th- thanks, SJ. That, that, was, that was beautiful. No, thank and, you, man. I, I loved our conversation. I, you so, know, the, the thing is, after these conversations, it, it takes me a while to come down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I definitely I'm, not, I'm not getting old and shriveling up. I'm telling you that right now. This, this yeah. divine energy, this divine life that that I know you and I feel, and hopefully others feel. Yeah. This is just, again, reality. And, and, uh, it comes out of, uh, our intimacy and relationship with this one who loves us and can't get enough of us. So thanks for making this available. You do all the behind the scenes work and I just, uh, oh, it's such to a- shoot my mouth off and, and, uh, <laughs> share my thoughts. <laughs> it's perfect, bro. And, and, uh, I love it because I, I just feel like I'm it, I'm still just waking up to see that what all that we have in Christ is the riches yeah. that we have are so massive. And but they they they've given me such a, a solid footing and so much joy and, and fruit and freedom. And and uh, so, yeah, it's fun to, to talk about it because I see it more and more every time. So, yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining. Um Maybe uh, share this with a friend. Check out the links in the description there. Uh, Buy SJ's books. And uh, yeah, um, hopefully we'll talk to you next time. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Find more from SJ Hill at sjhillonline.com or purchase his books on Amazon by entering SJ Hill into the Amazon search bar. Thanks for joining us today. And don't forget to subscribe and share this with anyone who might be blessed by the content. SJ does a limited number of speaking events per year. Please send any questions or event ideas to stephenhill6 at gmail.com. And may we all continue to enjoy the Father, Son, and Spirit who always fully enjoy us.